Welcome back to theCUBE's presentation of the AWS Executive Summit at reInvent 2021 made possible by Accenture. My name is Dave Vellante. We're going to look at how digital infrastructure is helping to transform consumer experiences, specifically how an insurance company is changing its industry by incentivizing and rewarding consumers who change their behavior to live healthier lives, a real passion of, of mine and getting to the really root cause of health. With me now are Simon Guest, who's the Chief Executive of Officer of Generali Vitality, GmbH, and Niels Müller Schaeffer, who's the Managing Director at the Cloud First Application Engineering Lead for the European market at Accenture. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having us. You're very welcome, Simon, Simon, Simon. Generali Vitality, it's a really interesting concept that you guys have envisioned and now put into practice. Tell us, how does it all work? Sure, no problem. And thanks for, for having us on, Dave. It's a pleasure to be here. So look, uh, Generali Vitality is in its, uh, its core, a pretty simple concept. So it's, uh, it's a program that you have on your phone. And the idea of this program is that it's a, it's a wellness coach for you as an individual. And it's going to help you to understand your health and where you are in terms of the state of your health at the moment. And it's going to take you on a journey to improve your, your lifestyle and your wellness and hopefully help you to lead a healthier and a more sort of mindful life, I guess is, is the best way of summarizing it. From, um, from our point of view as an insurance company, of course, you know, our historical role has always been to uh, be the company that's there if something goes wrong. You know? So if, if unfortunately you pass away or you have sickness in your, in your life or in your family's life, that's, that's historically been our role. But what we see with Generali Vitality is something a little bit different. So it's a program that really is uh, supposed to be with you every day of your life to help you to live a healthier life. It's something that we already have in, in four European markets. In fact, in five from this week, I'm, I'm a little bit behind the time. So we're live already in, in Germany, in France, in Austria, in Italy, and in, and in Spain. Uh, and fundamentally what we, what we do, Dave, is to, is to say to customers, look, if you want to understand your health, if you want to improve it by moving a little bit more, by visiting the doctor more, by eating healthier, by taking healthy choices on a daily basis, we're going to help you to do that. And we're going to incentivize you for going on this journey and making healthy choices. And we're going to reward you for, for doing the same. So, you know, we partner up with, with great companies like Garmin, like Adidas, like big brands that are, uh, let's say, invested in this health and wellness space so that we can produce really a, an ecosystem for customers that's all about live well, make good choices, be healthy, have an insurance company that partners you along that journey. And if you do that, we're going to reward you for, for that. So, so, you know, we're here not just in the in difficult times, uh, which of course is one of our main roles, but we're here as a partner, as a lifetime partner to you to, to help you feel better and, and live a better life. I love it. I mean, it sounds so simple, but, but it's, it's, I'm sure it's very complicated to, to make the technology simple for the user. You've got mobile involved, you've got the back end, and we're going to get into some of the tech, but, but first I want to understand the member engagement and some of the lifestyle changes, Simon, that you've catalyzed. What's the feedback that you're getting from your customers? What does the data tell you? How, how do the incentives work as well? What, what is the incentive for the, the member to actually do the right thing? Sure. Look, I think actually the, the, the COVID uh, situation that we've had in the last sort of two years has really crystallized the fact that this is something that we really ought to be doing and something that our customers really value. So, I mean, look, just to give you a bit of uh, sort of information about how it works for, for customers. So what we try to do with them is, is to get customers to understand uh, their current health situation, you know, using their phone. So, uh, you know, we, we ask our customers to go through a sort of health assessment around how they live, what they eat, how they sleep, you know, uh, and to go through that sort of process uh, and to give them what we call a vitality age, which is a sort of, uh, you know, sort of actuarial comparison with their real age. So I'm, I'm 45, but unfortunately my, my vitality age is 49 and it means I have some work to do to bring that back to together. Uh, and what we see is that, you know, two thirds of our customers take this test every year because they want to see how they are progressing on an annual basis in terms of uh, living a healthier life. And if what, if what they are doing is having an impact on their life expectancy and their lifespan and their health span. So how long are they going to live healthier for? So you see them really engaging in this, in this uh, approach of understanding their current situation. Then what we know actually, because the program is built around this model that uh, really, activity and moving and exercise is the biggest 
contributor to living a healthier life. We, we know that the majority of deaths are caused by lifestyle illnesses like you know poor nutrition and smoking and drinking alcohol and not exercising. And so a lot of the program is really built around getting people to move more. And it's not about being an athlete, it's about you know getting off the, the underground one station earlier and walking home or making sure you do your 10,000 steps a day. And what we see is that, that sort of 40% of our customers are on a regular basis linking either their phone or their, their exercise device to our program and, and downloading that data so that they can see how, how much they are exercising. And at the same time, what we do is we set, we set our customers weekly challenges to say, look, if you can move a little bit more than last week, we are going to, to reward you for that. And we see that you know, almost half of our customers are achieving this weekly goal every week. And it's really a fantastic level of engagement that normally as an insurer, uh, we don't see. The way the rewards work is, is pretty simple. It's similar in a way to an airline program. So every good choice you make, every activity you do, every piece of good food that you eat, when you check your, on your health situation, will we'll give you points. And the more points you get, you go through, through a sort of status approach of starting off at the bottom status and ending up at a gold and then a platinum status. Uh, and the, the higher up you get in the status, the, the higher the value of the rewards uh, that we give you. So almost a quarter of our customers now, and this is accelerated through COVID, have reached that platinum status. So they are the most engaged customers that we, we have and those ones who are really engaging in the, in the program. And what we really try to create is this sort of virtuous circle that says, if you live well, you make good choices, you improve your health, you, you progress through the program and we give you better and, and stronger and more uh, valuable rewards for, for doing that. And some of those rewards are, are around health and wellness. So it might be that you get, you get a discount on, on gym gear from Adidas. It might be that you get a discount on a, uh, on a, on a device from Garmin. Or it might be actually on other things. So we also give people uh, Amazon vouchers. We also give people uh, discounts on holidays. Uh, and another thing that we, we did actually in the last uh, year, which we found really powerful, is that we've given the opportunity for our customers to convert those rewards into charitable donations because we, we work in generality with a, with a uh, sort of um, uh, campaign called the Human Safety Net, which is helping out the poorest people in society. And some, what our customers do a lot of the time is instead of taking those financial rewards for themselves, they convert it into a charitable donation. So we're actually also linking wellness and feeling good and insurance and some societal good. So we're really trying to create a, a virtuous circle of, uh, of engagement with our customers. I mean, that's a powerful cocktail. I love it. You got the, the data, the, because if I see the data, then I can change my behavior. You got the gamification piece. You actually have, you know, hard dollar rewards. You could give those to, to charities. And, and you've got the, the most important, which is priceless, can't put a value on good health. I got one more question for Simon and then Niels, I'd love you to chime in as well on this question. How did you guys decide, Simon, to engage with Accenture and AWS and the cloud to build out this platform? What's the story behind that collaboration? Was there unique value that you saw that, that you wanted to tap that you feel like they bring to the table? What was your experience? Yeah, look, I mean, we, we'd worked with Accenture as well because the, 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 the sort of construct of this vitality proposition is a pretty, a pretty complex one. So you mentioned that the idea is simple, but the, the build is not so, uh, is not so simple. And that, that's the case. So Accenture has been part of that journey uh, from the beginning. They're one of the partners that we work with, but specifically around the topic of, of rewards. Uh, we, you know, we're, we're a primarily European focused organization, but when you take those countries that I mentioned, even though we're next to each other geographically, we're quite uh, diverse. And what we wanted to create was really uh, a sustainable and reusable and consistent customer experience uh, that allowed us to go get to market with an increasing amount of, of efficiency. And, and to do that, we needed to work with somebody who understood our business, has a his historical, let's say, investment in, in the vitality concepts, so, so knows how to bring it to life, but, that, but then could really support us in making uh, what can be a complex uh, piece of work as simple and as, as replicable as possible across multiple markets, because we don't want to go reinventing the wheel every time we, new, we, we move to a new market. So we need to find a balance between having a consistent product, a consistent technology offer, a consistent customer experience with the fact that we, we operate in quite diverse markets. So this was, let's say, the, the, the reason for more deeply engaging with Accenture on, on this journey. 
Thank you very much. Niels, why don't, why don't you comment on, on that as well? Love to, to get your thoughts and, and really, really it's kind of your role here. I mean, Accenture Global SI, deep expertise in, in industry, but also yes. technology. What, what are your thoughts on this topic? Yeah, I'd love to, love to comment. So when we started the journey, it was pretty clear from the outset that we would need to build this uh, on cloud in order to get this scalability and this ability to roll out to different markets, have a central solution that can act as a template for the different markets, but then also have the opportunity to localize different languages, different partners for the rewards. There's different reward partners in the different markets. So we needed to build an, an, an asset basically that could work as a template, both centrally standardizing things, but also leaving enough flexibility to, to then localize uh, in the individual markets. And if we talk about some of the more specific requirements, so one, one thing that gave us headaches in the beginning was the authentication uh, of the users, because each of the markets has their own systems of record where the, um, basically the authentication needs to happen. And we somehow needed to still find a holistic solution that comes through the central platform and we were able to do that uh, at the end through the AWS Cognito service, sort of wrapping the individual markets, uh, local IDP systems. And by now we've um, even extended that solution to have a standalone cloud native kind of um, IDP solution in place for markets that do not have a local IDP solution in place or don't want to use it for, for this purpose. Yeah. So you um, had you had data, you have you had the integration, you've got local laws, you you mentioned the flexibility, you're building ecosystems that are yes. unique to the to the local uh, uh, both language and and cultures. Uh, please, you had another comment. I, I interrupted you. Yeah, I know I just wanted to expand basically on the on the requirements. So that, that was the central one, being able to roll this out in a, in a standardized way across the markets. But then there were further requirements. For example, like um, being able to operate that platform with very low operations overhead. There is no large IT team behind Generali Vitality that you know, works the servers or can, can act as this IT backbone support. So we needed to have basically a solution that runs itself, that runs on autopilot. And that was another big, big driver for first of all, going to cloud, but second of all, making specific choices within cloud. So. We specifically chose to build this as a cloud native solution using, for example, managed database services, you know, with automatic backup, with automatic ability to restore data that uh, scales automatically, that, you know, has all this built in, which usually maybe a database administrator would take care of. And we applied that concept basically to every component, to everything we looked at, we, we, we applied this requirement of how can this run an autopilot? How can we make this as much managed by itself within the cloud as possible, and then land it on these services. Um, for example, we also use the, the API gateway from, from AWS for our API services. That also came in handy when, for example, we had some response time issues with the third party we needed to call. And then we could just with a flick of a button basically introduce caching on the level of the API gateway and really improve the user experience because uh, that data you know, wasn't updated so much, so it was easier to cache. So these are all experiences I think that that uh, proved in the end that we made the right choices here and the requirements that, that drove that to, to have a good user experience. Niels, would you say that the architecture is, uh, is, is a sort of a data architecture specifically, is it a decentralized data architecture with sort of federated you know, centralized governance or is it more of a centralized view? What if you could talk about that? Yeah, it's it's actually a centralized uh, platform basically. So the core product is the same for all the markets and we run them as different tenants basically on top of that infrastructure. So the data is um, separated in a way obviously by the different tenants, but it's in a central place and we can analyze it in, in a central fashion if, if, if the need arises from, from the business. And, and, the, and the reason I ask that Simon is because essentially I look at this as, a, as largely a data offering for your customers. And so uh, Niels, you were talking about the local language and Simon as well. Uh, I would imagine that the, that the local business lines have specific requirements and specific data requirements. And so you've got to build an architecture that is flexible enough to meet those needs, yet at the same time can ensure data quality and governance and security. And that's not a trivial challenge. I wonder if you, you both could comment on that. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll give a start and then Simon can chime in. 
So um, what we're specifically doing is managing the rewards experience, right? So, so our solution will take care of tracking what rewards have been earned for what customer, what rewards have been redeemed, what rewards can be unlocked on the next level. And we, we foreshadow a little bit uh, to, to motivate, to incentivize the customer. And uh, as said, that data sits in an AWS database in a, in a tenant by tenant fashion. And um, you can run analysis on top of that. Maybe what you're getting into is also the, let's say the exercise data, the fitness device tracking data that is not specifically part of what, what my team has built, but I'm sure Simon can comment a little bit on that angle as well. Yeah, please. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah, sure. So look, I think the, the topic of data and, and how we use it uh, in our business is a very, is a very interesting one because it's, um, it's not historically been seen, let's say, as the remit of insurers to go beyond the, you know, the, the, the data that you need to underwrite policies or process claims or, or whatever it might be. But, but actually we see that this is a, a whole point around being able to create some shared value in, in this kind of product. And, and what I mean by that is, uh, look, if you are a customer and you're buying an insurance policy, it might be a life insurance or health insurance policy from, from Generali, and we are giving you access to this, uh, to this program. And through that program, you are living a healthier life and that might have a, you know, a positive impact on generality in terms of, you know, maybe we're going to increase our market share or maybe we're going to lower claims or we're going to generate value out of that. Then uh, one of the points of this program is that we then share that value back with customers through the rewards on the platform that we, that we've built here. And of course, being, being able to understand that data and to quantify it and to value that data is an important part of the, of the, the different stages of how you, of how much value you are creating. And it's also interesting to know that, you know, in a couple of our markets, we, we operate in the corporate space. So not with retail customers, but with, or with organizations. And one of the reasons that those companies give vitality to their employees is that they want to see things like the improved health of a workforce. They want to see higher presenteeism, lower absenteeism of, of, of employees. And of course, being able to demonstrate that there's a sort of correlation between participation in the vitality program and things like that is also uh, is also important and, and as we've said the markets are very different so we need to be able to to take the data uh, that we have out of the vitality program uh, and be able in in the company that, that I'm managing to to interpret that data so that in our insurance businesses we are able to make uh, good decisions about the kind of insurance product we have. I think what's interesting to uh, to make clear is that Actually, that, that the kind of health data that we, we generate stays purely within the vitality business itself. And what we do inside the vitality business is to analyze that data and say, okay, is this is this also helping our insurance businesses to to drive, uh, yeah, you know, better top line and bottom line in the in the relevant business lines. And this is different per company and per market. So yeah, being able to interrogate that data, understand it, apply it in different markets and different. Uh, distribution systems and different kinds of uh, approaches to insurance is, is, an in, is an important one, yes. It, it's an excellent example of a digital business in, 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 you know, we talk about digital transformation. What does that mean? This is what it means. I, I, I'd love, I mean, it, it must be really interesting board discussions because you're transforming an industry, you're lowering overall costs. I mean, if people are getting less sick, that's more profit for your company and you can choose to invest that in new products. You can give back some to your corporate clients. You can play that balancing act. You can gain market share and, and, and you've got some knobs to turn, some levers uh, for your stakeholders, which is, which is awesome. Neil, something that I'm interested in, I mean, it must've been really important for you to figure out how to determine and, and measure success. I mean, you're, you're obviously removed. It's up, it's up to Generali Vitality to get adoption for, for their customers, but at the same time, the efficacy of your solution is going to determine, you know, the ease of, yeah. of, a, of, of delivery and, and consumption. So, so how did you map to the specific goals? What were some of the key KPIs in terms of I think, mapping to their, yeah. you know, uh, uh, aggressive goals? Uh, yeah, uh, besides the things we, we already touched on, I think one thing I would mention is the timeline, right? So we, we started the team ramping in January, February, and then within six, six months, basically, we had the solution built and then we went through an extensive test phase. And within the next six months, we had the product rolled out to three markets. So this 
speed to value, speed to market that we were able to achieve, I think is one of the key um, key criteria that also Simon and team gave to us, right? And there was a timeline and that timeline was not going to move. So we needed to uh, make a plan and adjust to that timeline. And uh, I think it's both a, a testament to, to the team's work that they did, that we made this timeline, but it also is enabled by technologies like cloud, I have to say. If I go back five years, 10 years, if you, if, we, if you had to build a solution like this on a corporate data center across so many different markets and each managed locally, there would have been no way to do this in 12 months, right? That's for, for sure. Yeah, I mean, Simon, you're a technology company. I mean, insurance has always been a tech heavy company, but, but as Niels just mentioned, if you had to do that with IT departments in each region. So my question is, is now you've got this, it's almost like non-recurring engineering costs. You've got that, it took one year to actually get the first one done. How, how fast are you able to launch into new markets just from a technology perspective, notwithstanding any you know, local regulations and figuring out the go to market? Is that compressed? Yeah. Yeah, so if you ask specifically technology wise, I think we would be able to set up a new market, including localizations that often involves translation of, of because in Europe, you have all the different languages and so on. Uh, I would say four to six weeks, we probably wow. could stand up a, a localized solution. In reality, it takes more like six to nine months to get it rolled out because there's many other things involved, obviously, but just our piece of the solution, we can uh, pretty quickly wow. localize it to a new market. But, the, but Simon, that means that you can spend time on those other factors. You don't have to really worry so much about the technology. And, and so you've launched in multiple European markets. You know, what do you see for the future of this program? Come to America. You, you know, you can, fi you can find that you, this program in America, Dave, but with one of our competitors. We're not, we're not operating so much in, uh, in the US as, as generally, but you can find it if you want to become a customer for sure. <laughs> but yes, you, you're right. So look, I think from, from our perspective, uh, you know, to, to put this kind of business into a new market is not, is not an easy thing because what, what we're doing is not offering it just as a, as, a, as a service on a standalone basis to customers. We want to link it with, with insurance business. In the end, we are an insurance business and we want to, to see the value that comes from that. So there's, you know, there's a lot of effort that has to go into making sure that we land it in the right way. Also from a customer proposition point of view with, with our distribution different and they are, they are quite different. So. So yeah, look, coming to the question of what's next, I mean, it comes in three stages for me. So as, as I mentioned, we are uh, in five markets already. Uh, in, the, in the first half of 2022, we'll also come to, to the Czech Republic and Poland, uh, which we're excited to, to do. And that will, that will basically mean that we, we have this business in, in the seven main uh, generali markets in Europe related to, to life and health business, which is the most natural, uh, let's say fit for something like Vitality. Then, you know, the next the sort of second part of that is to say, okay, look, we, we have a program that's very heavily focused around uh, activity and rewards, and that, that's a good place to start. But, you know, wellness these days is not just about, you know, can you move a bit more than you did historically? It's also about mental well-being. It's about sleeping good. It's about mindfulness. It's about uh, being able to have a more holistic approach to well-being. And, and, and COVID has taught us, and customer feedback has taught us actually that this is something where we need to, to go. Uh, and here we need to have the technology to move there as well. So to be able to work with partners that are not just based on, on, uh, on, on physical activity, but also, also on mindfulness. So this is how one other way we'll develop the proposition. And then I think the third one, which is more strategic and, and we are you know, really looking into is there's clearly something in the whole uh, perception of incentives and rewards, which drives a level of engagement between an insurer like Generali and its customers that it hasn't had historically. So I think we need to learn, you know, forget, you know, forgetting about the, the specific one of Vitality being a wellness program. But if as an insurer, there's a role for us to play where we offer incentives to customers to do something in a specific way and reward them for doing that, and it creates value for us as an insurer, then, then this is probably, you know, a place that we want to investigate more. And to be able to do that in, in other areas means we need to have the technology available that is, as I said before, replicable, fast to market, can adapt quickly to, to other ideas that we have so we can go and test those in, in different markets. So yes, we have to, we have to complete our, our scope on vitality. We have to get that to scale and be able to manage all of this data at scale, all of those rewards at real scale and uh, to have the technology that allows us to do that without, without thinking about it too much. 
Uh, and then to say, okay, how do we widen the proposition? And how do we take the concept of vitality that sits behind vitality to see if we can apply it to other areas of our business? And that's really what the future is, is going to look like for us. You know, the, the isolation era really taught us that if you're not a digital business, you're out of business. And, and pre-COVID, a lot of these stories were kind of buried, uh, but the companies that have invested in digital are now thriving. And this is an awesome example, Jeff. And the other point is that J Jeff Hammerbacher, one of the founders of Cloudera, early Facebook employee, famously said about 10, 12 years ago, the best and greatest engineering minds of our, my generation are trying to figure out how to get people to click on ads. And this is a wonderful example of how to use data to change people's lives. So guys, congratulations, best of luck. A really awesome example of applying technology to create an important societal outcome. Really appreciate your, your time on theCUBE. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right, and thanks for watching this segment of theCUBE's presentation of the AWS Executive Summit at reInvent 2021, made possible by Accenture. Keep it right there for more deep dives.